Going not going overnight. Oh, as in like you want to keep it for the day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can do that when we get to the photo. Okay. Yeah. If you need it like right no, now. I don't need it now. Okay. Do it. Is that orange bag ready to go? I'm not sure. Actually, yeah, let me have it for now. Okay. My name is Mia Shepard and live here in Maupin, Oregon on the Deschutes River with uh, my wonderful husband, Marty Shepard, and daughter, Tegan. And we own Little Creek Outfitters and we've been guiding on Oregon rivers for 20 years now. Little Creek Outfitters, Little Creek Outfitters is based in Maupin and we guide on the Deschutes, the John Day, the Grand Ronde for steelhead trout and smallmouth bass. Been to Cuba, been to Cuba, Mexico, Honduras, and currently work in the Bahamas at Andro South Bone Fishing Lodge. And uh, bone fishing is a lot of fun. <laughs> You know, I mean, my, well, one of my big battles the last couple of years is really advocating for the sport of fishing. You know, because there's a, there's, there's a lot of people out there right now that are, I feel like, anti-fishing. You know, they want the resources protected, but they also want to take the angler off the river. And you know what? We are the voice for the river and the fish. And so, you know, that is part of that, that you know, really that ethos of conservation for me is, is the act of fishing. You know, if we're not out there fishing, the, yeah, no one is monitoring the river, no one, then you lose that connection with the resource. And so, um, you know, fly fishing is about, you know, connecting with, it, it's, fly fishing is about connecting with the resource and, and having fun doing it. And, um, you know, rods are going to break, waders are going to leak, Instagram stories are going to fade away. But the need to evolve and carry on the tradition, you know, that's never going to fade away.
So a nice quick pickup in your vegetables. So just a really just a, a, to increase the when you pick up just a little more. There we go. Yeah. Good. What is the culture in fly fishing that first exists? What is the enduring element that you think has withstood time? So that's two questions. So let's start with the first one. So what is the culture in fly fishing that persists? For me, that culture is simply having fun. You know, and that's, um, that's all I can, you know, simply it's to have fun. And when we take people guiding, you know, the first and foremost, most important thing for me is that people have fun. I want to share these incredible, beautiful places and with folks. And of course, you know, you want to see them catch a fish, but the, but the most important element is to have fun out there. And that's, I mean, that's, that's, so what is the culture of fly fishing that and, and that per persist? So another um, component of the fly fishing culture and what is persistent is I see, I see the fly fishing industry as an industry that is very conservation orientated and you know, we love the outdoors and we love connecting to these places. And if we don't engage in the process of protecting and, and protecting our resources, well, then we lose them and then we lose our opportunity. Yeah, that was so, so what is the enduring element that's would, withstood time uh, for, for me? Well, you know, we've been in the business 20 years of taking people fishing and so, that enduring element is that one, the sport is a lot of fun. And that, so the element is having fun. The enduring element that has withstood time is also adaptation. You know, we, this, as the sport continues to grow, we need to adapt to those changes. And so, in the last 20 years that I've been in this industry, it has grown substantially. I mean, everything from the number of people getting into the sport. Um, when I first got, got out on the water, I remember seeing no other women out there fishing. And in the last six years, I mean, that, the, just the women's industry alone has grown tenfold. There's so many new people getting into the sport, women and children. And COVID had a very, you know, large impact on that. Just, um, you know, people were looking for something to do outside. And so, you know, fly fishing was just an easy way and a fun way to, you know, connect with the outdoors. Call me a man, if you don't mind. What did the fish say when it That's hit the wall? Home. As I reach my Damn! Time, I've got great <laughs> yeah. my mad chef skills. done things you can't forget. I turned from your grace when you tried to give me sight. Now I pray your grace you give. May I pass through the night with an untroubled mind. You want to know how to spay cast? Buy a Skagit head three sizes too heavy for your rod and fits 30 feet too short. <laughs> Boom. Steelhead all day long. None of this Mia, Bruce, Crooks, Travis shit. 200, yeah. 145, 200 feet out of who? Yeah, even the fish are like, what the hell was that? I know. What, was that? what is that? Is that a knot? Is that two lines yeah, tied and together? Yeah, they're like, whoo, I dodged it. <laughs> yeah. Woo, and then they all that one went right over my head. Yeah. Woo. So many beginners it out. catch steelhead. And 
I think for a few different reasons. One, they're not thinking about the process the way that someone that's invested, you know, 10, 15 years, they're like thinking, I mean, they're really just like trying to will the steelhead to them. Whereas a beginner is just like carefree and they're like, okay, whatever happens, happens. And so they're not, they're not putting that, that intense energy into like, I have to catch it. You know, they're just like, I'm out here to learn the process and then bam, fish on. Yeah, they don't put that nervous energy into the... They don't put their nervous energy into the into <laughs> catching the fish. There you go. That looks great. The New York Times. How do you think that your fly fishing values have affected you personally? You know, how has fly fishing impacted my values or maybe how has my values impacted fly fishing? Um, I was raised, so my mother raised us in, in the outdoors. She raised me and my sisters to go outside and, uh, you know, and respect nature and not harm bugs or animals or, you know, to have a garden, to grow, you know, our own fruits and vegetables. And, um, you know, over time, she taught me how to respect nature. And so I grew up with these values of, you know, and this ethos of, you know, this world is very important to us and our resources are, and so we need to take care of them. And we also, you know, need to respect people and, and you know, treat others the way that you would want to be treated. And that's how I was raised. Those were my values. And with that, you know, fly fishing is the same. So um, I take people fishing on a river because I love the outdoors and I love being on rivers and I want to share that with other with other people and with that it's it's an opportunity for me to share those values of in that ethos of you know we need to take care of the environment and if we want fish in the future well we got to engage in the political process um, and we also need to talk to our senators or we need to get, engol get involved with um, just conservation. Uh, and that's gonna be different for everybody. It, um, it could be donating a lot of money to somebody or it could be, well, it could be donating a lot of money to a conservation group or it could just be working locally with a school to get kids outside. This is the end of the trip. I hope you enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to the next.
stay tuned and stay connected with Swing the Fly magazine because that's where you'll find out when the next episode drops. Thanks again. Till then, tight lines. <laughs>